All right, so I think we can start now. Uh, so uh, first of all, let me welcome you to this uh, last episode of our series of webinars related to Incorta Cloud. Uh, my name is Islam and I'll be walking you through the uh, Incorta Cloud architecture and other stuff as well. So uh, our agenda for today will be covering uh, five main points. Uh, the first one, which is an Incorta Cloud overview, basically a refresher of what uh, my colleagues had already uh, gone through uh, through the uh, last couple sessions that 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 you attended. Uh, then we'll have a deeper dive into Incorta Cloud architecture. Then we'll talk about the Spark on Incorta Cloud, and uh, finally we'll uh, get a quick overview on data agent and the security and compliance. <laughs> So the first thing we want to talk about would be the Corta Cloud overview. Uh, so basically, why would we need to go to Corta Cloud? Why would you, as a customer, want to use Corta Cloud? Uh, these are the six main pillars of why you would be uh, preferring Corta Cloud over other things. Uh, basically, it would be simplifying uh, your experience and uh, the experience of uh, the admins uh, at your organization. Uh, basically, it's a SaaS model you can use just your browser and you'll be able to uh, go through everything. Uh, uh... Can you see my screen? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I wasn't sharing. Uh, let me try and... Uh... Reshare my screen again. Uh, can you see my screen now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back to the previous slide. So this is the agenda, as I was uh, telling you uh, a couple of minutes ago. And uh, this is the slide I was talking about. So basically, these are the six pillars that would encourage you to go to Incorta Cloud. Uh, first of all, it's simple. It's browser-based. You can just go use uh, the cloud portal with just a few clicks of button. You would be able to do a lot of things uh, that generally would require lots of time to be done within your organization manually if you have an on-prem deployment, uh, like, for example, creating a, commissioning a new cluster. Uh, and that's what we call create a new cluster in the cloud. Uh, just takes a few minutes, uh, cloning, upgrading, uh, doing backups and all of that. Uh, the flexibility, you would be able to actually connect to virtually every data source out there on earth. Uh, you can connect to your data sources uh, that are already on the cloud, or you can even connect to data sources that are uh, hosted uh, in your on-prem environment. And this all is uh, thanks to uh, what we call Incorta Data Agent, which basically pushes the data out of your network into Incorta Cloud, and we'll cover that uh, in the uh, uh, in the slides afterwards. Uh, the scalability, one of the major challenges that that one can uh, can actually face uh, when having a deployment on prem, would be uh, to scale up the uh, the, the environment. Uh, or even to fan out the environment, adding more instances, adding more services uh, for horizontal scalability or increasing the size of the machine uh, to accommodate for larger data, which would definitely require to go through procurement and uh, asking for uh, bigger machines and all of that. And I I know that everyone thinks that this, this is a, a big hassle for uh, uh, for a system admin or for a platform like Incorta uh, admin uh, at your organization. Uh, then the cost effectiveness, you wouldn't be actually uh, paying uh, a huge amount of money for the initial uh, setup of Incorta, then uh, finding out that this sizing is not correct for you and you need to either scale up or scale down, uh, but rather you will be paying for exactly what you need. Uh, also, the fact that uh, you can have multiple instances, and these instances, they can be uh, production ones and also a development ones. 
the development machines, uh, you don't really need to have them up all the time. You can spin them up whenever needed and uh, retire them or uh, push them to sleep whenever you're not needing them. And that that is something that, that you can use to uh, efficiently manage uh, your budget and cost. And definitely the fact that we are a cloud-first company now, uh, uh, being on the cloud, uh, we will be able to always provide you with the latest cutting edge uh, features that we are developing uh, for our customers early on before it gets released to the on-prem uh, customers. And lastly, uh, if this is something that uh, would actually make you worry, and uh, you should, <laughs> which is security, uh, we are SOC2 compliant, GDPR compliant, and definitely uh, CCPA compliant as well. All right, so this is a quick uh, and simple comparison between Incorta Cloud and the on-premise uh, deployment. So for uh, Incorta Cloud, we take away all the hassle of the management, as you see. We manage the infrastructure for you, the upgrades, monitoring and security, and definitely backups. But definitely you have to manage that yourself for the on-prem, where you would be uh, uh, provisioning uh, the machines either uh, within your data center or uh, on the cloud. Uh, you'll have to have people managing these. Uh, you'll have to manage the upgrades and all the uh, uh, the challenges that you might face there uh, related to taking backups and all of that. Uh, and definitely you'll have to build your uh, system for monitoring and security where you would be able to figure out any uh, uh, issues that might happen to the system related to infiltration or anything uh, uh, related to performance even. And finally, the backups, you'll have to manage that manually for the on-prem. Uh, other manual processes that, that actually go through uh, the uh, on-prem uh, deployment would be the provisioning of uh, uh, the machines if something happens to these machines. And that 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 is something that, that definitely we expect when we have the machines, uh, the physical machines running in our uh, data centers. Uh, sometimes the machines themselves, they fail and you have to find out a replacement for them. And you have to do that uh, as quickly as possible to, to make sure that the business is uh, running and, and and the downtime is not something that, that can affect the business. Uh, also, the provisioning for uh, uh, network resources like VPNs to connect to data sources outside of your network. And lastly, uh, the security and compliance. This is something that, that you have to uh, uh, go through all the certification, go through uh, the hassle of uh, filling all these questionnaires and all of that to make sure that you're internally compliant to uh, the regulations uh, either in, in the country that, that you're serving uh, in or uh, even the bigger organizations that uh, you're part of. All of this is easily managed on the cloud where uh, by just the click of a button, you can scale up or scale down if, if you need to. You can create new instances. Uh, say you want to try something new, a new use case or something. Uh, you don't really have to go through all the recruitment cycle to uh, build new machines in your data center. Uh, you can quickly do a clone by just one click of a button and definitely you can connect to data sources outside of your uh, cloud deployments and in your uh, data center, your private data center using data agent. And data agent is not just something that, that you have to use for the uh, on-prem uh, uh, data sources, but also, also you can use it for the cloud data sources. And this, this, uh, this performance comparison here, it shows you the uh, performance gain that you can get when you are using data agent because of the features that, that we'll talk about in the data agent uh, later on. Uh, so uh, in Corta Cloud, uh, it's currently available on both Google Cloud and uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, Google Cloud is currently available in Saudi Arabia. Microsoft Azure is not uh, yet there. Uh, and the regions that we currently cover are these regions. Uh, two regions in the US, we have regions in, in, uh, in Europe, we have uh, regions in uh, the Middle East, and uh, uh, we have regions in the Far East as well for Tokyo and Singapore. 
Okay, so for the second item of our agenda today would be in Corta Cloud Architecture. Uh, first of all, we'll go through a very high level uh, uh, architecture diagram where uh, here I'm just showing the two main clusters of components that we have. We have uh, the Incorta Cloud Portal uh, cluster of components, which is basically what you as a user would be using and interfacing with. Uh, these would be the, uh, uh, the features related to authentication, authorization, blueprints, which might, you might know also as data apps, the cluster management, uh, things related to creating uh, clusters, uh, deleting clusters, uh, connecting, disconnecting, upgrading, and all of that. Usage reporting to make sure that you understand how you're using your instances. Uh, do you actually need to upgrade them to increase the size, to scale them up, or uh, what you actually need to do with, with the machines? And finally, uh, billing and payment. Uh, for the internal or for the other uh, uh, group of uh, features or other cluster of components that we have, uh, it's for internal use, which is uh, the uh, basically the admin portal that our uh, support team and SRE team, they use to manage uh, the clusters for you. Uh, the network routing services, all the magic that happens related to the network and security and all of that, and definitely uh, uh, Kubernetes engines, uh, that we're using for uh, computation layer, as you see here for Incorta clusters uh, themselves, the analytics loader and all of that, and also for uh, Spark cluster as well. And lastly, the storage management layer, which is basically the, uh, uh, the installation uh, volumes that we're using, the metadata and uh, the actual volumes that we're using for the data, which is uh, object storage, as we will be seeing in the later uh, uh, slides. So one step deeper into the architecture. So as a, a user here, uh, you would be accessing in Corta Cloud via two uh, ways or two directions. The first one you can access in Corta Cloud as the portal itself where you would go to cloud.incorta.com and this is secured uh, via HTTPS. And you can use Incorta itself, the Incorta instance that you have. So say I have an instance called uh, uh, Muazzin, uh, that's my, my, my last name. So my instance would be muazzin.cloud.incorta.com. And uh, each instance or each cluster, it will have a unique name, a unique uh, human readable name. It's not, uh, like a randomly generated uh, string of numbers and letters and, and something that, that you cannot really uh, uh, remember down the road, but it would be something that you choose. It would be a name that you choose and uh, you, it, it will have a, a, a human readable uh, URL that you can use. You can access that URL using two things or you would be accessing that URL for two use cases, which is accessing Corta UI, the uh, dashboards, analytics, and all of that, and definitely using uh, the SQL I ports uh, to access your data through external uh, BI tools. And if you're using the latest uh, versions of Incorta, you'll be able also to access uh, SQL X and other features as well, as was explained uh, by my colleagues uh, before. So if you go to Incorta Cloud, this means that you're accessing the uh, 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 the main component of uh, the system, which is the Incorta Cloud controller, which is actually managing everything related to uh, Incorta Cloud through uh, managing Kubernetes masters. Uh, and uh, that Kubernetes master is actually uh, managing all the uh, nodes beneath it. The reason why we chose to use Kubernetes is the scalability and the robustness of Kubernetes and all the other features that are related to uh, scaling up, scaling uh, out uh, uh, that comes with using Kubernetes. Uh, so your instance on the cloud will be hosted on Kubernetes pods and these pods will be located in these namespaces. So each namespace of these, as you see, customer one, customer two, customer three, these constitute the all the components that, that you would need for your instance to run. 
as you see here for uh, for this specific uh, namespace, you have the analytics loader, uh, CMC, and all the other services that that are needed for uh, Incorta to operate. You would have all the Spark uh, executors that you would be needing, and I'll be uh, discussing that even further uh, later on. And definitely, you would have your storage layer for uh, the tenant directory. Uh, so this this is uh, these are the components that you would be using uh, from your side from from a user perspective. But how are we able to to actually manage all of that? We are managing all of that using these jump servers from the back end. This this and this is secured using Microsoft uh, Azure AD, and uh, everything is logged and. Uh, monitored so just to make sure that we are following all the compliances uh that that we talked about a few moments late uh, a few months before and uh we would be able to uh, uh automate things and make sure that we are monitoring and uh, uh figuring out if there would be any infiltration or uh, or something that 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 might happen in, in in that area and this this is uh already harder than we'll discuss that uh, in the last section of uh, this webinar. So one step further, as uh, as you saw in the previous slide, we had three namespaces for three customers. So how are these namespaces segregated and how are these namespaces uh, controlled and how do we make sure that uh, they once you're into our private network, you will not be able to gain access to other instances or other uh, clusters, uh, even from within your uh, organization or other organizations. Basically, we're using uh, the namespace segregation uh, features that are in uh, Kubernetes and all the network policies that come with it to make sure that we are just allowing the uh, the network traffic from you as uh, the owner of the instance to your namespace, and that namespace can connect with the management namespaces as well. These are shared namespaces that we have, just used for management and uh, uh, think of it as the controller that, uh, that can uh, start, stop, and do all the things uh, related to your instance. Uh, however, we deny all the communication between or intercommunication between namespaces, even if those two, two namespaces are belonging to the same uh, company or the same organization, they would not be able to communicate with each other. This direct access is denied and the access from John Smith from company one to uh, XYZ namespace, this is also denied. So uh, th this this is the basic building block of the security that uh, that we're building into our record cloud. So one step further into the namespace itself, what happens there? What are the components and how do we provision them? So uh, basically, uh, what happens is when you when you create when you are trying to create an Incorta cluster through uh, Incorta backend, this gives an instruction to uh, Incorta Kubernetes master. Uh, which then creates or assigns the pods to uh, the specific nodes that they can run on. We have multiple types of nodes. We have uh, uh, we have all the internal optimization for the node sizing and all of that, and we assign the nodes to the the, the correct sized. Uh, sorry, we assign the pods to the correct sized uh, nodes, and uh, once these are assigned, your instance will be up and running or the loader and the analytics. So what happens when you want to actually do a load? Uh, when you want to do a load, uh, your load job uh, might contain MVs and just normal tables. So for normal tables, your loader will connect to the data source and pull the data from there. But if you want to run MVs, this is the magic that uh, uh, that happens. We th th that's one of the great features that that actually comes with the Incorta cloud. We we are separating uh, uh, Incorta uh, uh, Kubernetes or Incorta instance Incorta building blocks from uh, Spark building blocks, where uh, Spark can actually scale up and down in a different way than uh, your Incorta instance. 
So uh, we have a different Kubernetes master for Spark. Whenever you want to run a Spark job, your loader or analytics, they send the signal to uh, that other Kubernetes master, which is the Spark Kubernetes master. And that uh, Spark Kubernetes master will be able to create these pods for you, which is the executors for your instance or the executors for your MD, the Spark job that you have. Uh, it, it, it will do all the computation, does all the magic that, that, that you've uh, ordered it to do, and then uh, bring back the results back to uh, your either loader or analytics, uh, the, the, the one uh, service that uh, basically send that signal. Uh, and uh, once they complete the work, they will just go away and they, they you will not be charged for uh, the off time that uh, that that uh, they, they are not actually operating on. Uh, both those two namespaces, they are called the same. They, they have the same name and uh, they do have the same access to that GCS bucket that you have where it hosts all the tenant uh, uh, all the tenant data that that you have loaded into a court. Uh, we'll we'll dive deeper here first. Then we'll take a deeper dive into Spark. So uh, going one step deeper into the namespace of your instance. So uh, that namespace, as we explained here, it has the analytics and the loader. So what happens there? So we have uh, four basic building blocks in that namespace. The CMC, which is the one that uh, that one service that that uses to control uh, the other services in Incorta, uh, the analytics and the loader. Uh, we have the zookeeper, and I know that this this is something that that uh, you've experienced uh, a lot with uh, for the on-prem deployment. And we have definitely the analytics and the loader. Uh, as you see here, uh, for the analytics, we have replicas we can actually provide you with replicas of your analytics this is this is something that that you can use for two things basically uh, uh high availability and higher throughput as well so assume that you have one huge user group that user group can uh can actually hit your system enough uh to make it uh virtually irres irresponsive if you're not sizing your instance uh, as big as uh, needed. However, if you want to use the, uh, the, the the high availability feature or the replica features in, in Incorta Cloud, uh, you'd be able to get replicas of, of your analytics to enhance or to actually do load balancing on your uh, analytics where you'd be able to get higher throughput with the number of users that you have. And this can actually grow with the number of users that, that grow at your organization. So maybe you would start with, uh, let's say, 100 users. Then by two months afterwards, you want to increase the number of users to, let's say, 500 users. Uh, you can actually increase at least one more replica of your uh, analytics and uh, measure the performance there. And we can definitely help you with size, sizing the, the correct number of replicas of your analytics. So you, you would be able to, to still sustain the same performance uh, that, that you would expect, to, that you have experienced with the first uh, 100 users. Uh, another cool feature that we have uh, in the cloud is uh, the notion of subclusters. So assume that you, uh, within your organization, you have two different groups of users. Let's assume that one group is the executive team. So as you would expect, or as anyone would expect the executive team, they, uh, they just use a few dashboards with, uh, with access to a few number of uh, columns or tables. And uh, you don't want their dashboards to be slow and sluggish if there are a huge number of users coming into the system at the same time. Uh, so the way that Incorta works, if there is competition on the memory, uh, Incorta would evict columns that have not been used lately out of memory to make sure that uh, it's pulling the uh, uh, the rest of the columns or the required columns from disk into memory to be able to execute the queries. 
So if you want to make sure that your executives are always able to access your uh, their dashboards without uh, uh, any issues related to performance, you can actually do some, some sort of segregation between the users. You would have user group one and user group two. So the user group one here, let's assume that this, this, uh, uh, this represents your executives. You can have a small uh, analytics dedicated for them and they would be the only ones able to access it through a different URL even. And uh, since they just need to use or to access that much amount of uh, data, you would be able to size it exactly for their use for their use case and their dashboards. Uh, and you would be able to guarantee for them uh, uh, the performance that they would expect from your dashboards without having uh, uh, their dashboards competing against other dashboards uh, for memory and uh, either they evict uh, uh, columns from other people or other people are evicting their columns. And this this uh, this can scale as much as, as you need. You can have a number of uh, uh, URLs for, for your instance, a number of subclusters, and you can also have uh, uh, high availability for each cluster and high throughput for each URL of those where you are having replicas of uh, uh, of the analytics within that subcluster that you have, either the main cluster or either these subclusters. Uh, also, on that same topic for the loader, uh, you can still have a number of loaders. You can have replicas of your loaders. Uh, where you would be able to split the loading, uh, uh, the loading effort or the loading uh, uh, plans uh, on these loaders to enhance the performance of uh, uh, the load uh, or to lower the load time in general. This this is also achieved through replicas of uh, the loader pod, and definitely in this namespace it has access to the GCS bucket, which is uh, uh, Kubernetes compatible storage and uh, the Incorta metadata database. All right, so as promised, uh, I, I first spoke about uh, our took a deep dive into Incorta namespace, and now I'm gonna speak on uh, or uh, discuss further on uh, Spark uh, on Incorta Cloud. Uh, first, I'll show uh, or, or I'll give you a quick idea on how Spark works on Incorta Cloud and or how Spark works on uh, Kubernetes. Then we'll match that to Incorta Cloud and see how things are actually designed there and all, all the magic that happens there. So basically, if you're using Spark on Kubernetes, this is the flow. When you're submitting a Spark job, it goes through uh, the Kubernetes master, and that Kubernetes master, as you, as you know, it has the, the scheduler and uh, that API server. Uh, basically, you're submitting to that API server, and based on uh, the logic within the scheduler, it will be able to uh, schedule the necessary pods as you instructed it, uh, uh, or as best as it can, based on the instructions that you gave it. So let's assume that I started a Spark job or submitted a Spark job. Uh, then a driver will be created, a driver pod will be created. That driver pod will then, based on uh, uh, the logic that I had there and the uh, specs that, that I sent to that uh, uh, context, uh, it will start requesting the executor pods. Uh, and also, let's assume that I have a dynamically scalable application, then whenever there is a new pod needed, that driver will still consume or request that new pod from uh, the Spark master. So there would be a backward uh, uh, request coming from the pod to the Spark master uh, uh, saying that I need new pods or I need new executors. The Spark master will be uh, communicating back to uh, uh, the driver telling it uh, here are your pods here are your executors that that uh, you can use, and these executors will be allocated, and uh, the driver will be able to communicate with them. So this is the driver; these are the executors, uh, uh, and all of this is dynamically allocated and scalable on uh, the cloud. Compare that to what you get for the on-prem. 
for the on-prem, uh, you would still get uh, to create the number of executors as needed, but you will be confined with uh, the size of the machine that you have or the size of the machines that you have for your Spark workers. However, for uh, uh, Spark on the cloud, that's that's definitely something different. As you see here, we we are able to scale out the number of nodes that are in the Spark cluster as needed related to the number of executors that, that uh, we want to accommodate. So if we want to uh, accommodate a huge number of executors, we'll also be able to just scale up uh, the number or, or fan out the number of uh, nodes, add more nodes to our node pool. And uh, this way we'll be able to uh, accommodate all the traffic that is coming towards us from uh, uh, the uh, the load jobs or from the submitted MVs. So what does this mean? This basically means that uh, you don't need to queue your uh, your MVs. You don't need to uh, think ahead when you're building your pipeline, when you're build building your load plans on how to schedule these load plans and how to uh, optimize these load plans based on the size of your Spark cluster. But rather, you should be thinking on the optimal way to run your load plans to, to get the best performance. And uh, this, this slide, is, uh, it basically shows uh, uh, the idea that, that I was talking about. So basically, a load plan is, as you see here, it, might consist of uh, uh, tables and MVs. Uh, these MVs and tables, they, they might be interconnected as, as you see here. This is, assume that this is uh, a dependency graph. So MV1, it has to run first, then encode the table one, then the output uh, is, feed, uh, is fed into MV2, and then finally you would be able to get uh, encode the table number three. Uh, sorry, core table number two. MV3 is totally independent from MV1, uh, and the output for it is fed into MV2, so MV2 needs to run after MV3, and uh, the output of MV3 can uh, be fed into MV4. And lastly, MV5 is totally independent from all the others. If you're trying to optimize for the capacity of your hardware, uh, Actually, running things in parallel might not be uh, appealing for you because uh, the, the hardware itself might not be able to accommodate running these three in parallel uh, or uh, running those three in parallel as well. But with Incorta Cloud and the scalable feature that we have for Spark, think of Spark on Incorta Cloud as a serverless Spark where you don't really need to worry about the infrastructure and how it scales. We, we, we do that job for you. All these four, five MVs, they can run simultaneously on the cloud with different sizes. And as you see here, these, these would be uh, the capacity that they are uh, occupying or the, the, the hardware size that they are consuming out of uh, the Spark cluster. So you worry about the performance of your load job and uh, you let us manage the uh, the hardware for you and the capacity for the hardware for you. All right, so uh, one of the great innovative features or the new products that we, uh, we have introduced on the cloud is Shidori. Shidori is uh, uh, a runtime, basically it's, it's a runtime management for Spark. Uh, Shidori, uh, Within Shidori, you'll be able to just submit your jobs. Shidori will do all the magic, making sure that these jobs are run and they don't really fail. Uh, it will assign the required resources, the optimal resources based on uh, the requested size. So these might be different sized node pools. So let's assume that uh, you have MVs that span from just simple data manipulation to machine learning MVs. Uh, so these machine learning MVs, they, they would require a huge number of uh, uh, resources related to CPU, uh, memory, or even GPU. 
So uh, this this is all managed by Shidori. Uh, you just need to build your MV, submit it, and uh, Shidori will do all the work for you. And it will do all the heavy lifting for you. One other cool feature about Shidori is the integration with other providers for uh, Spark. So that means that your MVs don't really need to run on a Corta Cloud Spark. So assuming that you have uh, uh, an account on Databricks, you have a, a, a specific Databricks cluster, and for some reason you want to use that uh, for a specific MV or something, you can still use uh, Shidori to abstract that for you and uh, uh, submit a specific MV to Databricks. So your MVs, uh, they don't really have to run all in one place. They can be uh, split into uh, different groups of MVs. Uh, some would run on Incorta Cloud Spark. Some would run on Databricks. Some would run on Cloud Data Proc, uh, or even on HD Inside by Azure. Uh, that allowed us using Shidori to extend uh, in Corta into the realm of machine learning, where you would be able to build your machine learning models uh, or machine learning uh, jobs and uh, leverage something like MLflow, which is uh, uh, an industry standard now to manage your uh, machine learning models and uh, manage their performance. Uh, this this is all done through the integration with uh, Shidori, and uh, as as explained in the previous slide, Shidori would be uh, allowing you to run your machine learning workload on uh, in Corta Cloud, or maybe leverage external tools like Sparkflows and Data IQ to build your machine learning uh, uh, models and capabilities within uh, in Corta. So this was basically. Uh, 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 in Corta, Cloud, and Spark, and all the magic that, that we have built into in Corta Cloud related to Spark. Now for the data agent, as explained before, data agent is that product that we built uh, that allows you to pull data from your on-prem uh, uh, data center into the cloud without actually having to expose your data center or open it to the public internet. So what happens there in the data agent, it uh, it would be hosted and residing within your data center, within your private network, secured, and you are able to control uh, all the traffic uh, coming into it and coming out of it. It will be pulling the data from the data source. Then it will securely push that data into Incorta uh, Cloud instance, the instance that you have on Incorta Cloud. Uh, the data agent itself uh, uh, is based on the protocol that, that we're using, which is based on Protopuff and all the security. Uh, you would be able to get an enhanced performance uh, because of the compression that, that happens there. And also, uh, you'd be able to get an enhanced uh, security because you did not really expose your uh, uh, data sources from your on-prem to the public internet. The last thing that I want to cover today uh, would be the cloud security and compliance. So uh, those are four uh, four topics uh, for, for the security, security and compliance, the data encryption uh, and security, the user security, the infrastructure, and the compliance. Uh, so for the data encryption, uh, we are using KVM where you would be uh, getting a unique and randomly generated key. Uh, and that key is definitely not hard coded. Uh, this key is used to encrypt everything related to your uh, uh, data sources uh, in Incorta Cloud. Uh, the, uh, the key itself is not stored as plain text, which is obvious. Uh, because you want to protect that key. The key itself is stored uh, uh, encrypted and it's only decrypted uh, when the server is started and uh, the, 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 the only version, uh, the only plain text version of that key resides within the server uh, memory. 
this is the, just used during the runtime to decrypt the encrypted uh, values that we have, uh, which are protecting your uh, data. Uh, the key is rotated every 90 to 120 days. Uh, this is this uh, meets the GDPR compliance. Uh, the data agent uh, is actually yeah, using that encryption to connect to Incorta uh, from uh, behind uh, the firewalls. Some future enhancements that that we are planning to, uh, planning to to accommodate and to add to uh, the data agent. Uh, sorry, to uh, the KVM. Uh, is to allow you as customers to bring your own key uh, and uh, to actually, with a click of a button, you can regenerate the key or uh, uh, rotate the key. Uh, uh, you don't really need to wait for 90 days to rotate the key. Uh, the other thing would be the cloud management. Uh, the cloud user management, the cloud user management, we're using uh, SSO and we're integrating with OS0 uh, to comply with uh, something like GDPR. We have two different sites in OS0, one in the US and one in EU, uh, and we do the, the balancing between those two. Uh, this allows us to uh, enhance uh, the, uh, the authentication and authorization uh, and allow uh, allows you as a customer to uh, bring your own uh, IDP and uh, SSO as well. Uh, and uh, this this also enhances the, uh, the login experience where you would be able to use social login if needed and definitely uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, next, this, this is basically a slide where we talk about the infrastructure hardening and security. These are the efforts that that we uh, we do every uh, uh, every quarter to reassess uh, uh, the different aspects of our infrastructure security hardening, uh, from the identity access management, networking, logging and monitoring, the machines that we're using, uh, database service, the application service, storage accounts, and all of that. And last thing that I want to cover today would be the compliance. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are SOC 2 type 2 compliant and GDPR compliant. Uh, and uh, these reports are uh, available upon request for uh, uh, the uh, the InfoSec team to, to review. So uh, that's all for today. Thank you everyone for joining. And uh, before we go, I want to uh, remind everyone to uh, start using their Incorta Cloud uh, accounts. And if you have any questions related to Incorta Cloud uh, accounts, uh, you can just uh, uh, contact the customer success manager of your organization and uh, they will be able to put you in contact with the correct person to answer your question. And uh, lastly, please uh, make sure to uh, write down your questions and we'll be uh, answering all the questions and uh, replying to your questions uh, by email. Uh, that's it. Thank you everyone for joining and hope to see you again in uh, other sessions and webinars. Thank you everyone.